Number 10, wash your hands. No, seriously, go, go wash your hands right now. When was the last time you washed those filthy nests? Go wash your hands. Washing your hands is super important, especially these days. But something that's very unusual about the Aztecs compared to a lot of other civilizations in history is that, well, they did wash their hands. Oh, and you have no idea how happy that makes me. No more shall I have to think about people shaking hands after using the bathroom with no toilet paper. That's disgusting. Or scooping food onto a plate with their bare, dirty hands and sharing that food with the rest of their families. Yes, the Aztecs like to wash their hands before and after a meal, which is just the way it should be. I hate having grimy hands. You know, I talked to the chief today, and you know what he said? That's it, that's actually it. Yeah, we like that, that's it. Number nine, Aztec Barbershop. It must have been quite the sight for Spanish conquistadors to land upon the shores of North America and then come to bear witness the Aztec civilization in all its glory. Something noticed by the curious Europeans was that the Aztecs had what looked like a barbershop for men. After all, a healthy scalp is a happy one. Even more interesting than that, however, is women were dyeing their hair with a green herb that I'm not even going to begin to pronounce. It was just too hard. It was a lot of X's and T's. I couldn't do it. Which produced a purple shine to their hair. Some women even shaved their hair off, while older women, like mothers, had longer hair. Man, it's almost as if a beautiful civilization was starting to flourish. Well, I'm sure nothing bad ever happens to the Aztecs, right? Number eight. My heroes. Let me create a scenario for you. I like creating scenarios. Let me create a scenario for you. You're on the way to a certain event that is very important in the big city. Maybe it's a new job, a new summer fling, or something that requires dry pants. But now your stomach is acting up. It's big angie. Your stomach's making sounds that are becoming more audible and you can feel soon you will require a bathroom. But you hold it in. I can make it past this event and then go, you say to yourself, no problem. But now you've got cramps, sweats, and you're getting anxious as you know that DEF CON 1 is approaching. You now have to make a decision to make a rush to find a bathroom or be late for your event or take a gamble with your underwear and dignity. Yes, that is a feeling I know all too well, but perhaps I should have been living in the Aztec Empire as they had public washrooms all over the city. That's just awesome. Oh, what sweet relief. As if that weren't the most unusual, they also had citizens cleaning the streets, which is pretty unusual for the time. Yes, cleanliness was very important to the Aztecs, and honestly, I think there should be public toilets on every street corner. Please, sometimes I gotta go. Number seven, thirsty. After a trip to the public washrooms, you may need a drink of water to rehydrate yourself. I mean, come on. I know I could use some hydration after that. Sometimes it gets really sweaty in there. Well, it's a good thing that the Aztec cities had canals. And not just the kind of canals a small Italian gentleman derives a boat through on Valentine's Day, but canals that handled both transportation and irrigation. Aztecs knew just how important water was for life, but perhaps most unusual about the Aztecs is their night soil collectors, which honestly sounds like it's hiding something just in that name. Night soil. Basically, they were beta garbage collectors who used canoes to transport this night soil to farms for fertilizer. And yes, night soil is exactly what you think it is. Poop! But it's unusual for a civilization to be so conscious of where their waste goes. Don't believe me? Well, how about this summer? We all get together, we all go up to New York City and take a dip in the Hudson River. Yeah, not many takers, didn't think so. They were doing their best with what they had. And if women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. You know what I'm saying? Number six, ye olde dentistry. Look, every time I find a decent dentistry fact, I slap that bad boy in here like a D-based infomercial host with a surprisingly effective kitchen gadget. You're gonna love my nuts, remember that guy? This is just one of those facts. Do I have a fear of the dentist? No. No, I don't, because my dentist is nice and has all the modern amenities to make me feel at ease. A comfy chair, laughing gas, and putting Peppa Pig on the TV because I'm a big baby. Goo goo gaga. However, no amount of any of those things I mentioned can prepare you for the dentistry before the year 1900. It was crude to say the least, but hygiene is hygiene, and you gotta keep that mouth fresh and clean. Tooth infections were fixed with rubbing charcoal in the affected area, and if that wasn't enough, a super safe mixture of snake venom and vinegar vinegar was used. What? I, okay. Who was the first guy that discovered snake venom had such healing properties? Probably the same weirdo who first milked a cow, if I had to guess. 
Aztec dentistry included fillings and tooth removal as well. Also, ladies of the evening dyeing their teeth distinct colors, so then you'd know if you know. You know? Look at my red teeth, boys. Number five, steam baths. Now looking back and learning that the Aztecs had public washrooms everywhere and had access to steam baths because of their irrigation is fantastic. I mean, come on, just think about it. You could relax after a long day in your own steam bath that's made by natural running water. It sounds like doing yoga there would make me feel more in touch with my inner chakras. And my mood crystals would glow just a little bit brighter. Imagine, you walk into a bathhouse after a long day, and then you see me just sitting there with a towel that barely fits. Well, hey there, good looking. Why don't you come on in and pop a squat next to me? I promise I don't hog all the steam. <laughs> I know it sounds like an amazing time, right? The more we talk about the Aztecs, the more they sound like a perfect society. I wonder what happened to them. I'm sure it was nothing bad. They gotta be out there somewhere. Move over, fellas. I'm coming in for the steam. The steam was thought to have healing properties and was connected to their spirituality. Women even gave birth in the steam rooms, which feels like a really sweaty time. I just, I don't know about that. It's a lot of sweat. Number four, Bath and Body Works. It's clear the Aztecs were just cleaner than the other civilizations of the past, and honestly, I'm here for it. There's only so much a guy can say about people being stinky in the past. I mean, really, the smell must have been horrible, especially down in the nether regions. My lady, I would like to have a child with you, but the fragrance that is coming from both of our undercarriages makes me want to get into my carriage and drive it into the nearest body of water. Yes. Aztecs were making soap like it was their day job, using various herbs and plants to create much nicer smells and perfumes. However, during the rainy months, Aztecs wouldn't wash or wash their clothes in penance. But I guess one month isn't so bad. Strangely enough, women wouldn't wash their faces when men went off to war. I'm not sure about that one, but hey, I'll take it. Gold star for staying clean, Aztecs. Gold star. Number three, Bath and Body Works part two. Okay, another scenario. You're in the sixth grade. You're sitting at a desk and listening to Mrs. Smith, and she's going over what today's art assignment is. As you begin to reach for your favorite shade of red crayon, an odor hits your nose. It's unlike anything you've ever smelled before, and it's coming from your armpit. Puberty-induced body odor. Not to worry. Your buddy has a can of the finest spray deodorant there is. He hands you a black can that says Axe. You are now one of them. And you start showing up the school dances with a seafoam pink button-up shirt with the collar popped and a Justin Bieber haircut with the hat on backwards. Yeah, that's right. All while drenched in a can of Axe's finest. Shark tooth necklace shows every girl in the room that you're a tough guy. God, those guys are the worst. Okay, no, the Aztecs didn't go that far, but they were aware of the horrors of the classroom BO and recommended a special bath prepared with lovely smelling aromas, which makes sense. Good smells go in, bad smells from your bum, they go out. However, there's two ingredients that make me question things. Apparently, no odor killing bath is complete without a fresh bone from a dog and a human. I'm just gonna leave that with you and think about how you'd feel with two bones floating in your bath. That's disgusting. Apparently, they had to be fresh, too. That's gross. Number two, the Aztec classic. I'm glad the Aztecs had better hygiene, because for once, I don't get super queasy talking about the things people did. However, it wouldn't be a video about Aztecs if I didn't talk about their favorite pastime. Sacrifice. And honey, if they were giving out gold medals for it, the Aztecs would be record breakers. Sure, they weren't the only civilization to sacrifice people, but they did it with such theatrics. It would make my old theater teacher very proud. But unlike most civilizations, the Aztecs did this all the time. Whenever the calendar called for one, it was time for one. And if they ran out of people, they would go grocery shopping for more. Or actually just go to war and take people, which is not good. Just know that when a chief or a religious leader cuts the heart out of a man whilst alive for the entire city to see, he most likely had a clean cloth and water to wash his hands, making modern surgeons proud everywhere. Number one, the European bug. It's safe to say that Aztecs, while not as clean as people today, they were striving for better hygiene, more than any other civilization at the time, really. However, no amount of hand washing, sacrificing, or putting herbs in your bath can prepare them for the Spanish. Not just the swords and the guns and invading and such, no, I mean the sickness that Europeans brought with them. It's a plot similar to War of the Worlds, except the invaders brought all the nasties with them. No matter what the Aztecs did, it wasn't going to stop the waves of lovely things the Europeans brought over. Armpits are clean, but now they got black lungs. There's too many diseases to even name, there's a lot. At number 10, human sacrifice. It is believed that the Aztecs practiced human sacrifice as a way to repay their debts to the gods 
or as a display of political power. It really just depended on who was being sacrificed, which is honestly a little bit scary when you think about it. These rituals were a big deal to the community. It would involve a large gathering of people at the sacrificial temple. A priest would stand at the top of the temple with the person being sacrificed and they would use a ceremonial knife to make an incision along the abdomen, reach inside and pull out the person's heart while it was still beating. They would then place the heart in a bowl and then push the person down the temple stairs. What makes this more intense is the fact that those in attendance would also hurt themselves as part of an auto-sacrificial ritual. Imagining all of this happening at once is quite mysterious and a little scary if I'm being honest. At number 9, Capture. Usually in warfare, especially in ancient times, the goal was to eliminate your enemies, so to speak. You go out there and you get rid of the threat. For ancient civilizations like the Greeks and the Romans, the amount of kills that you had determined your success as a warrior, but things were different for the Aztecs because they didn't rate your skill as a warrior on how many kills you had, but rather how many captures. It is believed that the Aztecs didn't want to kill their enemies on the battlefield and that doing so was actually very clumsy. Instead, they believed that capturing your enemy alive showed more skill on the battlefield. This is a very different practice than most other ancient civilizations because most of them were all about blood shed and gore. Now you might be wondering why they preferred to capture their enemies and not eliminate them on the battlefield and that's because they needed more people for sacrifices, point blank period. They didn't want to use their own people so they used as many outsiders as they could and battlefields were the perfect place to find new sacrifices. So capturing their opponents was just a win win for them. Now before I carry on with the rest of these mysterious facts, let me first take a moment to ask you guys to consider leaving a like on this video if you're enjoying it so far and maybe even subscribe to the channel if this type of content is really up your alley and you would like to see more of this. At number 8, Psychological Warfare Other than their practices of capturing their enemy on the battlefield, the Aztecs also had other methods of taking down their opponents and that was through psychological warfare. Within the Aztec army, there were different ranks called Jaguars and Eagles and these warriors, when in battle, wore outfits to make them look like their namesakes, either Jaguars or Eagles. The eagles wore feathers and wore wooden helmets that made it look like the warrior's face was coming out of an eagle, and the jaguars wore the skin of a jaguar and wooden helmets that looked like the animal as well. While in battle, it is believed that these outfits were used for psychological warfare to confuse their enemy and frighten them away with these agile animalistic warriors. And if their outfits and agility weren't enough to scare them off, it is said that the other Aztec warriors would also bang on drums and make a lot of noise to scare off their opponents. At number 7, Insane Weapons The Aztecs were some bloodthirsty people, as you could imagine. I mean, unaliving people was part of their everyday practice, so you could imagine that they would have come up with some pretty brutal weapons to take down their enemies, right? Well, let me tell you about one gnarly weapon that the Aztecs called Hungry Wood because of how bloodthirsty this thing was. Because the Aztecs never developed metal tools, they had to improvise to make their deadly weapons and they used what was available to them. To make the hungry wood weapon, they used a wooden plank and they embedded shards of obsidian into it and this thing was super sharp. Apparently it was powerful enough to take someone's head off and honestly, I wouldn't second guess that. According to a report from Spaniards who encountered the Aztecs, they once saw a warrior use this weapon to take the head off a horse in one blow. This was even tested in real life and though it took more like 3 solid blows to achieve the same outcome, the fact that this ancient tool was powerful enough to do that says a lot about this civilization. And number 6, different afterlife. In many different cultures, they have varying stories of what happens to you after you pass away. There seems to be a common theme of a quote unquote good place and a quote unquote bad place, but with the Aztecs, they were really doing something different with their stories of the afterlife and it all depended on how you died. In Aztec beliefs, if you died as a warrior, then your soul would go on to somewhere that involved more war and you would battle there for four years before returning to the earth as a hummingbird. For women who died during childbirth, their afterlife involved them helping the sun prepare to rise and fall. For those who died of some kind of sickness, they went to an afterlife that had an abundance of food. And for those who simply died of old age, then they went through a trial and their souls had four years to pass through eight levels of challenges some of which included climbing an obsidian mountain and passing through an area of beasts who eat human hearts. And if they made it to the ninth level, then they would finally find peace. Their afterlife was incredibly complex and did not sound at all restful. At number five, 
Harsh truth. Life is hard. No one really tells you that when you're a kid. Well, at least not these days. Back during the reign of the Aztec civilization, kids were taught from day one that life was not going to be easy for them. From the moment a baby was born, they were told that life was pain, you know, so that they knew exactly what they were getting themselves into. In Aztec culture, as soon as a baby was born, the midwife would take the baby in their arms and tell them the truth about life. They would look the newborn in the eyes as part of their religious tradition and tell the child, quote, life is an affliction, end quote. To really make the point of how tough that kid's life is gonna be, the midwife also promised the child that they would, quote, die a horrible and violent death, either in war or as human sacrifice, end quote. Sounds like quite the life. At number four, stretch the kids. We all know that over time we grow, right? It's just a fact of life. We start off as little babies and we grow into big adults and whatnot. Well, the Aztecs kind of knew this, but didn't quite understand the whole concept of growth. They knew that people grew, but they thought that it was a manual thing and that they had to stretch their kids by hand to make sure that they grew to be big and tall. And no, I'm not making this up. They actually stretched their kids. In their culture, Aztec parents would hold ceremonies called the stretching of people to make them grow. I know, catchy name, right? During this stretching ceremony, they would take the kid by the neck and just dangle them in the air, letting gravity do its thing, and then they would move on to pulling on their arms and legs to stretch them out a bit to make sure that every part grew evenly. I have no idea where this thought to stretch their kids came from, but I do know that Aztecs were obsessed with making sure that their kids grew tall. So I mean, if pulling a stretch Armstrong on little Timmy helped him grow an extra inch, then to each their own, I guess. At number three, discipline. This is probably one of the wildest forms of discipline I have ever heard of, and I would not recommend that you try this on your own kids because this is absolutely brutal, but then again, the Aztecs were some pretty brutal people, so it's only fitting that they start off at a young age. Aztec parents did not take any kind of lip from their kids. No one was misbehaving on their watch. Now, the disciplinary actions that the kids received varied depending on their age. If they were under the age of 11, then the naughty children would be poked with spines from a cactus, and if they were really bad, then they would be covered in those spines. But for kids over the age of 11, their punishments for being lazy or misbehaving were so much worse than being poked with cactus spines. Instead, they would hold their kid over burning chili peppers in a fireplace, making them breathe in the fumes. This was a very harsh punishment, but that was the life of an Aztec. Harsh from the get-go. At number two, mandatory dance party. Another pretty odd thing that the Aztecs did was they held mandatory late night dance parties. Yeah, they basically had raves that everyone had to attend. This all night dance party was essentially the only way that young Aztec boys and girls could socialize because apart from these social gatherings, they were separated at school. These dance parties gave them a chance to socialize and also learn about their culture as it gave the adults an opportunity to share stories with the youngest generation of Aztecs. They would spend the whole night learning about religion and philosophy through songs played at the dance party. And the young Aztecs would also learn to flirt with one another since it was their only opportunity to. I think that out of all of the weird facts about Aztec culture, this is actually pretty cool because I've never heard of a culture having mandatory dance parties before. That's actually pretty awesome. And finally at number one, skull racks. Now moving on from something groovy to something rather spooky, we have Aztec skull racks. If you were to visit large city centers and temples at the height of the Aztec civilization, then you would have been greeted by a rather scary sight. Racks upon racks of human skulls estimated to be as large as 200 feet long and 100 feet wide. These racks featured the skulls of thousands of sacrificial victims. These racks were there to honor the gods to whom these victims had been sacrificed, as well as to demonstrate the city's power. I'm sure that if you walked into a big city and saw thousands of skulls lined up like that, you would be a little afraid too, right? The Spanish conquistadors were certainly frightened the first time they set eyes on the skull racks, and they documented every frightening emotion, making sure that we all knew just how frightening the Aztecs really were. Number 10, a market to die for. The housing market in a lot of places right now isn't exactly the greatest. I mean, who doesn't want to pay three grand a month for an apartment the literal size of a closet? You gotta love New York, right? Well, the Aztecs may have had a similar issue. No, not a housing market with unrealistic prices that are being pressured by both internal and external factors, but rather the Aztecs would bury their dead underneath their homes. What? Yes, that's right. Your house could sit on top of grandma. 
She loves you, you love her, and now you can be close forever. As great as an idea as this sounds, I personally have a few issues with this. All right, one being that if your family members perish because of a disease, I feel like having them in close proximity to you, even though they're underground, is kind of a bad idea. Oh, also, because, you know, there's just bodies living underneath your house. Way too goth for me. I'll stick to my house not having any burial grounds underneath it, thanks. Yeah, no thanks. Number nine, bring us the girl and wipe away the debt, Mr. Do It. There's some really cool cities out there. Rapture, Columbia, Las Vegas. I've never been to Vegas, but honestly, it's my kind of town. All you can eat buffets, gambling, shows, ladies of the evening. Man, what a city. The Aztecs may not have had a city that never sleeps, but they did have a floating city. No, not exactly like in Bioshock, but close enough. The city of Tenochtitlan was built on a lake, and according to legend, an eagle told the tribes of Mexico, that's what Aztecs were, that's what Europeans called them. I don't know why they didn't call them by their name, but okay. To build their great city here, and it was a great city. The largest and most wealthy city in the region. Its power and wealth come from conquering other tribes and tributes. After all, like I say, if you're gonna be that powerful, you gotta break a few eggs to make your omelet. However, it's not all bad, as it was even known for being a very clean at the time, and may have even had its early version of a garbage program with garbage men. Looking at photos of the city, it looks pretty cool actually, so I'll make sure to visit here when, you know, traveling is safe again because of, you know what? Number eight, missing tech tree. If you've ever played Civilization, Age of Empires, or any other RTS game that lets you command armies of thousands and build bases and cities, then you know how important it is to understand each civilization's tech tree. Some are better than others, and some are a little overpowered. I'm looking at you, Greek from Age of Empires 1. Too powerful. With late 90s PC nostalgia set aside, some civs flourish even without access to certain tech. Like the real life Aztecs, for example, who strangely never discovered the wheel or the use of iron. Yeah, that's right. They built an amazing city on the water without what most Europeans at the time would consider essential. This does make sense when you factor in the terrain. Chino Tillon had lots of water, so trading and moving goods via boat was much faster. The region also had a lot of inclines and was somewhat mountainous, and they were a long way off from building tunnels with roads, so the boats, they'll have to do it for now. It just makes sense, actually. Number seven, the land of chocolate. When you think of chocolate, you think of Europe, or at least I do. Decadent, creamy, chocolatey goodness, especially Lindor's. Oh, oh baby, I can put a few of those away. However, my chocolate-loving friends, it wasn't exactly a European invention, as it was the Aztecs who first introduced the sweet treat to Europeans. Chocolate was so important to the Aztecs that for small purchases, cocoa beans were used as currency. Imagine walking into a coffee shop and instead of handing over a crisp dollar bill, you bust out a Milky Way bar and the cashier says, nah, you need a Milky Way and a Krispy Crunch. Ugh, coffee prices cost too many chocolate bars these days. I know, it's a lame joke, but sometimes we gotta have some lighthearted fun. There's a lot of nasty stuff in history. Like what happened after the Aztecs showed the Europeans what chocolate was. Just trying to have a little bit of fun. It, it gets worse down the line, trust me. Number six, girl power. I'm happy once again to tell you that some people of the past were not completely awful, no good, rotten men. Because women in the Aztec Empire had more freedoms than the Europeans did. Come on, Europe of the past, get with the program. Aztecs are letting women do stuff, and they do some other stuff that's pretty messed up. Which I will get to later, like I said. But for the women of the Aztecs, they were allowed to own property, businesses, but more importantly, could inherit wealth from their parents if they were male or female. Which Kinda means women can marry for love, whereas in Europe, marrying a woman is a business decision. Marry a woman and have children with a 20% increase of love and happiness, and 80% I married you because your father has money and my father has land, so let's make an alliance and just go with that. Say, your sister looks kinda nice though. Yeah, I'll stick to my wife who can own stuff, and all of our delicious chocolate, thanks. Yeah, that sounds a lot better. Number five, Montezuma. One day the Aztecs were big chillin' as Aztecs were known to do, when all of a sudden, some strange vessels came into view. It was Herman Cortez and the Spanish conquistadors. At first, relations were good, based on the curiosity of each other's civilizations, simply because everything was new. They looked at each other the same way dads look at a new drill and toolkit on Christmas morning. This, however, quickly soured as things became violent, and not the kind of violence that makes your parents not want you to play video games. I mean real violent, as the Spanish in 1520 slaughtered thousands of Aztecs, including religious leaders and the King Montezuma himself. The Spanish claimed they did this to prevent the Aztecs from their favorite pastime of human sacrifice. The Aztecs claimed the Spanish were after their goal 
old. We're both right or both wrong. I'm not sure, but what I am sure of is that there was some fighting, and it was a big loss of human life. Bad time to be in that city. It's a good thing powerful militaries would never again falsify information to aggressively take what they want, right? Number 4. Guns, Germs and Steel By this time it should be no surprise to anyone that Europeans did some naughty things. Bad Europeans, go sit in the naughty corner! You bad. The Aztecs simply didn't stand a chance against an enemy who was years ahead of them in technology. If having steel weapons and armor wasn't enough, the Spanish also had early firearms, which compared to the Aztecs was like having godlike powers. However, for the Aztecs, things were going to get much worse as the enemy that would have the most effect on them wasn't exactly the easiest enemy to fight. An enemy you can't exactly see. No, not ghosts. Nice try though. Germs, cooties, sicknesses. Europeans brought a whole bunch of lovely ones over. It was the Aztecs' first exposure to such, and caused many of them to perish. Basically the plot of War of the Worlds, except no Tom Cruise, and instead of the invaders perishing, it was the defenders. That movie's not great. Number 3. Accent Wall You probably couldn't tell, but I have a lot of experience with paint. Used to mix it for a living. And honey, I can tell that you've been thinking about redecorating. Repaint the walls with something happier. Bright colors are in. Trust me, sweetheart. Aztecs also like to redecorate, but not with paint, but with human skulls. A skull rack of sorts. Place to show off all the human sacrifice that the Aztecs had accomplished. I don't know why people of the past did this all the time. I bet you we'll find more creative human decorating in the future. However, I personally prefer bold colors on my walls instead of actual human skulls, but hey, that's just me. Archaeologists in 2017 found 650 skulls in a temple excavation in Mexico. That's that's just okay, sure. <laughs> that's normal. Number two. Fava beans. I ate his liver with a side of fava beans and a nice Chianti. <laughs> anyway, that's a bad impression. That impression was okay. I'm sorry. I don't know. <laughs> I think my Marlon Brando is better. But anyway, this one is very weird. Aztecs had a lot of gods and they wanted to keep them happy. Which I'll get to in the next part. But sometimes it wasn't all bad. Like when they built idols of gods with seeds and honey. Oh man, that's really yummy. I love seeds and honey. Oh, but I forgot an ingredient. Oh yeah. Blood. Yep, that's right. Seeds, honey, and blood. Like the worst granola bar ever made. They would break it off and everybody would just come and take a bite. Besides the major risks of consuming other people's blood, I don't know if you guys have ever tasted blood, but it's somewhere between gross and drinking liquid iron. The Aztecs were also known to practice cannibalism because of reasons. Uh, that's why. I get, a little, I get a little lightheaded just thinking about that. Number one. Kalima. Kalima. I saved the best part for last, and despite all the knowledge and beautiful things the Aztecs should be known for, they are perhaps most remembered for their human sacrifices. The Aztecs loved to sacrifice anything to the gods, honestly, and at one count, an estimated 80,000 sacrifices in four days. Is that something to boast about? I'm not sure. Taking the beating heart out of a person while still alive in front of roaring crowds, is that evil or is that theater? I don't know. Sadly for the people on the operating table and those watching the sacrifices did not seem to have much effect when Europeans came over and destroyed their cities. Maybe if we sacrifice harder, then we shall beat our enemies. Yeah, I don't know, but that's along the same thought process, I guess. I went into the chief's tent last night, and you know what? He said that's not it. 